um, given that the single biggest predictor of intergener intergenerational poverty is whether an individual was raised in a single or a two-parent household, uh, would you be for or against an affirmative action policy where the institution gives preferential treatment to applicants who were raised in a single parent household, or do you believe that that kind of policy would give rise to more problems of its own? Right, so uh, here's my view on affirmative action. I don't believe that you should lower standards in order to let people in because you're disadvantaging somebody else, and you shouldn't do it by color. So let me put it this way. If you have a white applicant who scored 1,400 on their SATs, well, sorry, I understand they changed the system now, 2,100 on their SATs, uh, and they want to go to a, and they want to go to a good school, and you have, a, and that person grew up in a single family, a single parent family, uh, impoverished, and you have a black person who's Colin Powell's kid who scores exactly the same score, then I think that if you're going to look at all the factors, you can say, okay, the person who had to overcome all these obstacles to get the same score deserves to get in. But that's based on overcoming obstacles. That's a character judgment. Uh, that, that is not a judgment on the basis of race. Uh, and I also don't think that it's a hard and fast rule with regard to single motherhood. Again, if you are the single child, uh, if you're, if you're the, the kid who is the, the child of some famous Hollywood actress and grew up in the lap of luxury versus you grew up in Appalachia or the inner city with two parents, uh, I think you have to look at totality of the circumstances, in other words. Okay, one more thing. Um, sure. Who do you think is the smartest person on the left? The smartest person alive? Uh, on the left, On yes. the left. Okay, sorry. The smartest person, yeah, those are two very different questions. Uh, the, the, <laughs> Uh, the smartest person on the left. Um, well, <laughs> points to the Lena Dunham shouting guy. Um, the, uh, it, hmm. I, let, let's see. Uh, I, I do think that, I mean, in, in terms of pure intelligence, I think that there are a lot of scientists who are on the left, you know. Like, I wouldn't want to get into a scientific debate with Stephen Hawking or Richard Dawkins. I mean, they're in a different field of specialty. So are you talking pure IQ or in terms of making good political uh, in arguments? Ter in terms of, uh, like, your political rival. Like, who would you, who would be like intellectual rival for you in terms of? I, I mean, I think that there are people who I'd be interested to, to talk to about policy. Um, you know, I think that uh, when I was at Harvard Law School, uh, there was, uh, there, there are a bunch of professors who are on the left, including Elizabeth Warren, actually, who, who uh, she was relatively interesting to talk to, although got less so over time. Um, but uh, the, but uh, there's a guy named Richard Parker, who's a professor there who I really liked. Uh, Lonnie Guinier, who is a professor there. Uh, who actually ended up writing me a law firm recommendation. She was such a leftist that she was, I believe, nominated for undersecretary of labor under Bill Clinton, and a Democratic Senate rejected her because she was so far left. She was a, she was a smart lady. Um, again, I, I don't think that all leftists are stupid or anything. I think that they start from wrong foundational principles, and if you're a smart person starting from the wrong principles, you can reason your way into virtually anything.